What's going on, y'all? I'm your boy, Sound Selector Zachariah, and it's Africa Mambada Week on Urban Sound Studies. In this video, we're going to go over his bio. Africa Mambada was born to Jamaican and Barbadian immigrant parents as Lance Taylor on April 17, 1957. He's now age 65. He grew up here in the Bronx River Houses in the Bronx, New York. This is where he found his roots and started his hip-hop journey. Africa Mambada's mother and uncle were part of the Black Liberation Movement and exposed Bam to the ideologies of the movement as a kid, not to mention his mother's eclectic record collection, which would set the foundation for Bam's bright future. Bam said in an interview that his mother was proud to have the biggest record collection on the block. Bam, at a young age, became a member of a local gang called the Black Spades. Gangs at that time became very powerful by assisting the community and throwing parties to keep gang members in turf. Bam rose in position quickly to become a warlord. His responsibility was to build ranks and expand the turf of the Black Spades. Mombada had a natural leadership presence and was not afraid to cross enemy turf to forge positive relationships between the gangs. It was this effort that led the Black Spades to become the biggest gang in the city. But Mombada left the gang after two cops ambushed and killed his friend. Africa Mombada, known as Lance Taylor at the time, won an essay contest that earned him a trip to Africa. He had also seen the movie Zulu and was impressed by the solidarity of the Zulu nation in the film. After feeling inspired from his trip to the motherland, he changed his name to Africa Bambada Asan, adopting his name from the Zulu chief Bambada. In the late 1970s, Bam went on to form the Universal Zulu Nation, an alternative gang that used hip-hop to draw angry kids out of street gangs and violence. The principles of the gang were based on peace, unity, love, and having fun, which he would repeat throughout all of his music. Check out this video of Mombada explaining the vision for the Zulu Nation. Well, as a visionary in the Universal Zulu Nation, we always thought we wanted to do something better of hip hop to take it over the world into many different communities. So we had vision of this, but now our big vision is as we become galactic humans that we start taking hip hop when we start traveling to other planets. It is argued by hip hop historians about who the originators of hip hop was. Most agree it was DJ Cool Herc, who was also from the Bronx, but some say it was Bombada. Story goes that Disco King Mario loaned Bam his first set of DJ equipment and began to throw block parties around the South Bronx. One of Bombada's first official club performances was put together by Fab Five Freddy of Yo MTV Raps at the Mud Club in Manhattan, which was frequented by many of New York's in crowd like Jean Michael Basquiat, Keith Haring, Madonna, and Debbie Harry. What is known for a fact is that Bombade was the first to use the words hip-hop in print when he was interviewed for The Village Voice in New York City. But Bam was not just known as an MC, but also a DJ and producer. He formed two rap crews, first was the Jazzy Five, and the other being the Soul Sonic Force. An AKA that he was known for was the Master of Records. Bombada was highly influential in the origins of hip-hop and electronic music. Mombada was mostly inspired by the West Germany group Kraftwerk and their futuristic electronic music albums such as Autobahn and Trans Europe Express. Also, Bam gives inspirational credit to the Japanese electro pop group Yellow Magic Orchestra, who from which Bambada sampled as well. In 1981, the New York pop synth group Eben Ozen commercially released the first American record to be recorded on a computer. That same year, Bambada and the Soul Sonic Force stopped performing with a live band and began to exclusively use technology in their music. In 1982, Africa Mambada recorded his biggest hit, Planet Rock. The song sampled the keyboard hook from Kraftwerk's Trans Europe Express. Planet Rock became a legendary song to help legitimize the electronica genre as well as hip hop. Check out this clip of Bambada performing and notice his unique style. Just check out those glasses, the horns, and those custom-made performance outfits. It's all there. Bombada and the group Soul Sonic's Four Style can be attributed to Sun Ra's Egyptian planetary style and Parliament's wild costumes. Africa Bombada was booked on the first ever European hip-hop tour called the Roxy Tour in 1983. Put on by manager Rosa Cool Lady Blue, this tour featured OG B-Boys, graffiti artists, and of course hip-hop crews. The Roxy Tour was prevalent in spreading hip-hop culture around the world. Over the course of his career, Bam put out a lot of music on different record labels and distributors, such as Paul Winley Records, Tommy Boy slash Warner Brother Records, 
and EMI, plus a few more. Bombada also released music with other groups. In 1984, he recorded with the groups Time Zone and Shango. Another notable recording done by Bam was with the godfather and soul himself, James Brown, called Unity. Check out this clip of Bombada performing the song. That same year, Bam appeared in the classic hip-hop movie, Beat Street. Bambada was also largely involved in the Stop the Violence movement with many other hip-hop artists. Together they recorded the song Self Destruction, which hit number one on the Hot Rap Singles chart in 1989. The single went gold and raised 400000 for the National Urban League. Africa Bambada went on to record music with the Jungle Brothers, Rage Against the Machine, and more. Bam also helped organize a concert in honor of the release of Nelson Mandela from prison, which also introduced hip-hop culture to the African mainland. In 1990, Bam made Life Magazine's Most Important Americans of the 20th Century issue. In 2006, Africa Mbata put out his last album, Death Mix 2, which ironically was the name of his first album, Death Mix, in 1983, both put out by Paul Winley Records. In 2012, Bam was given a three-year appointment as visiting scholar at Cornell University. In this course, he taught about hip-hop culture using his personal collection of vinyl, original audio, video recordings, manuscripts, and books. Since then, Bombada has put out new music in singles form by collaborating with new music artists like Marcos Carnival, San Rapper, and Prince Whipper. Bam still remains relevant to the music industry, and his origins helped pioneer the hip-hop and electronic music genres. Check out this clip of Africa Mambada explaining why we need to learn the history of hip-hop music and keep it moving for the future. We gotta um, get people back to that fifth element of hip-hop, get them back to the knowledge. So too many are caught up on just the partying, the, you know, the, and, and not dealing with all the elements of hip-hop. They just deal with the rap side of hip-hop. So we got to let them know it's a culture. And come back to that fifth element, the knowledge. So without the knowledge, this is what controls and holds everything together. The way I see it, DJ Cool Herc was hip-hop's first DJ, but Africa Mambada was hip-hop's first producer. Alright y'all, so that's been the biography of Africa Mambada. This is Urban Sound Studies, and I'm your boy Sound Selector Zachariah from the West Side with Love, Peace, and Chicken Grease. That means I get it poppin', you heard?